Every year in September, the American Library Association promotes Banned Books Week to celebrate the freedom to read and draw attention to the harms of censorship. This week, Blaine High School celebrates our freedom to read by sharing passages from several banned or challenged books, such as the book Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell, an award-winning novel. In 2013, Eleanor and Park was challenged in the Anoka Hennepin School District by parents who objected to what they deemed were inappropriate language and themes. The book was reviewed by a challenge committee, a group of teachers, students, and community members tasked to read and discuss the book. The committee voted unanimously to keep the book on the shelves. According to the author herself, Eleanor and Park is set in 1986. It's about two 16-year-olds who fall in love on a school bus. The story is told from both of their points of view. Eleanor, a chubby redhead, is the new kid at school, and she's facing some pretty intense bullying. Also, she has a terrible, abusive stepdad, who makes life at home miserable. Park's home life is pretty good. His parents love him and each other, but he's one of the only Asian kids at school, and he listens to bands no one has heard of, and he feels like a misfit, even inside his own house. So Eleanor and Park fall in love, unexpectedly, and intensely and they both feel saved by that love. With the freedom to read comes the responsibility to make thoughtful choices about what stories and characters we invite into our lives. The staff at BHS encourages all students to read, to learn, and to grow with whatever books you choose, perhaps one of the many thousands available on the shelves in our media center. Just choose to read those books often. Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. You must make your choice. Our civilization has chosen machinery and medicine and happiness. That's why I have to keep these books locked up in a safe. They're smut. People would be shocked if... So I guess we are who we are for a lot of reasons, and maybe we'll never know most of them. But even if we don't have the power to choose where we come from, we can still choose where we go from there. We can still do things, and we can try to feel okay about them. Perks of being a wallflower. How nice to feel nothing and still get full credit for being alive. Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. It's really a wonder that I haven't dropped all of my ideals because they seem so absurd and impossible to carry out. Yet I keep them because in spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. Anne Frank, the diary of Anne Frank. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. William Shakespeare's Macbeth. Huh? The rules of the Hunger Games are simple. In punishment for the uprising, each of the 12 districts must provide one girl and one boy called tributes to participate. The 24 tributes will be imprisoned in a vast outdoor arena that could hold anything from a burning desert to a frozen wasteland. Over a period of several weeks, the competitors must fight to the death. The last tribute standing wins. Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. The mark of the immature man is that he wants to die nobly for a cause, while the mark of a mature man is that he wants to live humbly for one. The Catcher in the Rye, J.D. Salinger. Uh, stuff your eyes with wonder, he said. Live as if you'd drop dead in 10 seconds. See the world. It's more fantastic than any dream made or paid for in factories. Ray Bradbury, Fahrenheit 451. I draw because words are too unpredictable. I draw because words are too limited. If you speak and write in English or Spanish or Chinese or any other language, then only a certain percentage of human beings get your meaning. But when you draw a picture, everybody can understand it. If I draw a cartoon of a flower, then every man, woman, and child in the world can look at it and say, that's a flower. Sherman Alexie, the absolutely true, true diary of a part-time Indian. There's no beginning, no middle, no end, no suspense, no moral, no causes, no effects. What we love in our books are the depths of many marvelous moments seen all at one time. Kurt Vonnegut, Slaughterhouse Five. In a way, her strangeness, her naivete, her craving for the other half of her equation was the consequence of an idle imagination. Had she paints, or clay, 
or knew the discipline of the dance or strings, had she anything to engage her tremendous curiosity and her gift for metaphor, she might have exchanged the restlessness and preoccupation with whim for an activity that provided her with all she yearned for. And like an artist with no art form, she became dangerous. Toni Morrison, Sula. It is a sin to write this. It is a sin to think words no others think and to put them down upon a paper no others are to see. It is base and it is evil. We were born with a curse. It has always driven us to thoughts which are forbidden. It has always given us wishes with which men may not wish. We know that we are evil, but there is no will in us and no power to resist it. This is our wonder and our secret fear that we know and we do not resist. My favorite book, Anthem, by Anne Rand. It was a pleasure to burn. It was a special pleasure to see things eaten, to see things blackened and changed. With the brass nozzle in his fists, with this great python spitting its venomous kerosene upon the world, the blood pounded in his head, and his hands were the hands of some amazing conductor playing all the symphonies of blazing and burning to bring down the tatters and charcoal ruins of history. Number one, do you know why books such as this are so important? Because they have quality. And what does the word quality mean? To, mean, to me, it means texture. This book has pores. It has features. This pen book can go under the microscope. I grabbed my book and opened it up. I wanted to smell it. Heck, I wanted to kiss it. Yes, kiss it. That's right, I am a book kisser. Maybe that's kind of perverted, or maybe it's just romantic and highly intelligent. Sherman Alexi, The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. From the Lorax by Dr. Seuss. It was a close place. I took it up and held it in my hand. I was a trembling because I got to decide forever between two things, and I noted. I studied a minute, sort of holding my breath, and then says to myself, all right then, I'll go to hell. Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Harry crossed his fingers under the table, and a second later the hat had shouted, Gryffindor. Destroying things is much easier than making them. The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Sometimes I think high school is just one long hazing activity. If you are tough enough to survive this, they'll let you become an adult. I hope it's worth it. That was Laura Pulse Anderson out of the book Speak. I think it's if you walk by a field of purple and don't notice it. The color purple, Alice Walker.